and then inside the America Adventure. I'm not going to go through the full attraction today, but I heard that they have um, like a museum display inside, so I'm going to go in there and check it out. I do need to film this entire attraction one time. It's been forever since I've been in here, and they also usually have a group in here that'll sing. They changed their Wow, cool, here it is. And there's some on display behind me. Let's check it out. It's been forever since I've been in here, and I don't remember this. I don't know if I remember this section being here or not. It's so long. I forget what this one's called. I read about it. Well, let's head on in and check it out. This is cool. Look, they have these lights on it, do you see? It kind of like shimmers. That is awesome looking. Korean tradition, innovation and challenge, uh, innovation and change in American Indian art. Okay, so this is from different regions. This is from the California Hawaiian region. Very cool. It's a pomo tray. I say it's made from sedge root and dyed bulrush. Say that's a purse, a pulley stick, I'll let you uh, read this if you want to pause it. I'll try to take pictures of all this too. I wonder if you put your hand here. Ah, Munida Grand Thunder Fogarty in Makiapi. Kaya Yahi Makakiapi. Chante Washte Yuha Chain Shapi. Hello, my name is Winita Grand Thunder Fogarty. I am a Cinnaboyne Sioux from the Fort Peck Reservation, Montana. We consider ourselves a horse culture because horses enabled our ancestors to travel the Great Plains. We honor our horses in the same way we honor our leaders, by making finely beaded headdresses for them. Bead and quill work have been in my family for generations. It is a living spiritual art. We create to honor our ancestors and the natural world. That's cool. Each cradleboard, doll, and item of clothing, or headdress can they be got, um, three or four of these videos. Stories of the star people, the mountains, lakes, and skies are retold in the borders of Buffalo Road, Here's the Great Basin and Plateau region. Some women's boots. Some northern shoe shown women's leggings and moccasins. There's a handbag. A UT pouch. And I get some good information in here about them. A little hard to read because they keep it pretty dim in here, but it's probably for the preservation of everything. Okay, so those videos aren't that long, so I could technically film the whole thing if I wanted to. If you want to pause and read it, go ahead. Some acknowledgments. Here's the Eastern Woodlands. Oh, 
I'm going to try to take pictures. I'm not sure how the pictures are going to be with this uh, reflection. It all depends. That's a big basket. Here is the southeast. A bracelet. Basket. I'll let you pause it if you want to read it like I said with the others. Here's some of the music selections that they probably have playing here. And then a little information about Native American music. Maybe a little hard for you to read. gives you an idea what they have here. You really gotta stop for yourself. Began around 1850, Navajo men were the first of the Southwest Native artists to practice silver work. Huh, interesting. Oh, that's cool, I like that one. Very pretty. It took a long time to make that stuff. In the past 150 years, the purpose of pottery produced in the Southwest 90 public has gradually changed from domestic kitchenware to tourist souvenir to fine art object. There's another one of those videos, and I may play each of them for you guys. They're not going to be too long, I don't think. Here's the Northwest Coast and Arctic. First, I'll show you the sign here. Some of this is actually, I guess you could say vintage, and some of them, some of this was um, a more a newer creation. See, many native, native peoples in the Arctic region are still subsistent hunters because every part of the harvest animal made from dried seal testi and the parkas and balance displays here are small replicas of those worn by ocean fishers. Material strong, light, and waterproof. They're sown with grass, but swell when wet, sealing every seam against the seawater. Gotta show the ones here in the middle. Can't forget that. Here's the southwest. I definitely think those are a modern creation. The iPath X Apache shoes from 2008. And here's the plains.
pretty cool. Okay, let's play these because they're pretty short. Hello, my name is Juanita Grove Thunder Fogarty. I am a Cinnaboy Sioux from the Fort Peck Reservation, Montana. We consider ourselves a horse culture because horses enabled our ancestors to travel the Great Plains. We honor our horses in the same way we honor our leaders, by making finely beaded headdresses for them. Bead and quill work have been in my family for generations. It is a living spiritual art. We create to honor our ancestors and the natural world. Each cradleboard, doll, item of clothing, or headdress conveys our identity and homeland. Stories of the star people, the mountains, lakes, and skies are retold in the borders of buffalo robes, teepee covers, and winter cow hides. As we be, we pray, sing, and tell stories so that each work is filled with gratitude, honor, and sometimes loss. My creations are inspired by dreams, by stories told at family gatherings, or stories shared as we be together around the table. Our lifestyle has prevailed over the centuries, and now it is my duty and my blessing to carry on this beautiful legacy. Go to the one over here. Hello, my name is Lauren Aragon. I was raised at Acoma Pueblo, which is a historic community located 60 miles west of Albuquerque, New Mexico. Because we live in an arid semi-desert, all of our ceremonies, stories, and prayers focus on a broken rain. Acoma is renowned for its exquisite pottery, which is made from precious rainwater, natural clay, and pottery shards. The pots have renderings of animals, plants, and rainstorms, all of which provide us sustenance. In our art, we honor flying creatures like dragonflies that gather around water sources. My mother and grandmother continued this tradition as potters in full years of ceremonial outfits. As a child, they gifted me with a love of precise design, as well as the needed discipline and dedication. Today, I apply these aesthetics in my fashions to honor our enduring lineage. I strive to reflect their elegance, and in doing so, wish to share the beauty of our culture with all people. So it's only a couple minutes long at the most. All right, here's the last one. My name is Wendy McKinney. I'm an Inglewood Catholic pastor. I was raised by my mother, aunts, and grandmother who were from the small Alaskan villages of Anvik and Flat. My grandmother was the sole supporter of our family and a hard worker. She taught us to respect the game, birds, fish, and ocean mammals that sacrificed for us. Every part of the animal became food, clothing, shelter, tools, or a work of art. We prayed that their spirits would return in the afterworld so that our lifestyles could continue. My grandmother, aunts, and mother made intricate beadwork, quillwork, and clothing. We used the colorful wildflower and flora designs for hundreds of years by replicating them on baskets, cradle boards, clothing, and bags. Their beauty teaches us balance and precision. I still hunt and gather everything for my detailed creations. I create dolls in honor and remembrance of people I've met and stories told to me by my elders. My artwork continues to honor my family, ancestors, and Athabascan heritage. Okay. Just in time, I'm going to change the battery. It's flashing. All right. Pretty cool little museum here in the American Adventure um, attraction. And I forgot to mention, you can also see stuff out here too. Outside of the gallery. There's some more on the other side of the window.
innovation and change, create, uh, creating tradition in American Indian art. There's a couple of different people that helped him with it, groups. Then over here you can see some more. Okay.